Hi everybody, it's Pastor Renee again. Good to be here with you. And uh, I pray that today that I'm recording this is actually All Saints Day, and I pray that you're able to remember those people in your lives who have led you in your faith, led you to God and your walk with Jesus, and are no longer with us in this world. And so I pray that you give that some time today to consider those folks, and if you'd like to honor one or more of them, uh, you can do so at our next worship service, which is November 7th. We'll be celebrating All Saints Day, which is the first Sunday in November, and uh, we'd love to have you at our Horicon Juno or Lowell United Methodist Churches here in Dodge County. Love to have you. So, uh, today, we're going to be hearing about reaching our destination. I'm first going to read scripture from the chapter 12 of Mark, verses 28 to 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe asked him, or scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you are a GPS user like me, you know the feeling you get when you hear the GPS say, those sometimes long-awaited words, you have reached your destination. For me, that feeling is relief. Ah, that long or stressful trip is over with now. And, you know, maybe now I can go and enjoy the destination. Now, of course, I don't use the GPS every day. I usually know where I'm going. But uh, on those occasions where I am heading out to parts unknown, I need a little guidance in getting there. And I remember one time, I was on a long trip out of state, and uh, I decided, or maybe more or less my stomach decided, to stop for lunch. And a roadside told me that Culver's was three miles off the highway down a side road. And I thought, it's worth it. It's Culver's, you know. So I strayed from the route that the GPS wanted me to take, that I had programmed in, and headed down the side road. Now, for reference, at that time, the voice on my GPS, I had programmed it to be the British actor, John Cleese. I love John Cleese. He's just, he's a very fun actor and I, I really enjoy him. So I figured that would be great. And so as, as the side road that I was traveling down was not going to get me to my destination anytime soon, John Cleese, my GPS, told me to turn left in an attempt to get me to legally get back on course and get back turned around to go to the ramp and get back on the highway. 
when I ignored its advice and kept driving towards Culver's because those chicken strips were calling me. John Cleese, or, you know, that GPS voice, gave me the I-don't-think-so-legal advice to make a U-turn when possible. I don't know if it was legal in that state. But anyway, when I ignored that piece of advice, I then heard John Cleese say to me, Turn around and head in the opposite direction, idiot. Oh my, okay, well, I didn't know if I really appreciated uh, it going to that next level of name calling. So anyway, when I got to Culver's, which it definitely was down there, um, I changed the voice on my GPS. Sorry, John Cleese. But, uh, yeah, I thought I should have a little, you know, friendlier voice talking to me. So instead of British accent, John Cleese, which I really enjoyed, I, I got a random American woman's voice who, you know, she never resorted to name calling when giving me directions. So a little less harsh is what I was needing, I think. So why is Pastor Renee telling you all about my sassy GPS? Well, I'm so glad you asked. You see, our journeys through life can be hard to navigate sometimes. And we might make decisions that aren't advisable by others. And in turn, they may get upset with us. They might see us going with the, in a direction where they consider it to be the wrong way for us to go. And they may even react to those decisions by calling us names like idiot. On the trip I told you about, it was my hunger that led me off the advised path. When you think about it, how often do our hungers for creature comforts get us in trouble. My hunger was for chicken strips, but maybe someone else's hunger is for something even less good for them. I don't know how to say that, because I know t chicken strips aren't, you know, health food, okay? So, something dangerous, drugs and alcohol, and maybe a sinful relationship, or the vain pursuit of power and money. I mean, these things, these are things that can lead us off the right path. And hopefully those side trips that I just mentioned are temporary and people are able to get back on the right path. But, you know, not everybody can. Some people never get back on the right path. In our reading today, the scribe had a pertinent question for Jesus regarding which commandment is first of all. When Jesus answered the scribe and then the scribe agreed with Jesus and even complimented him, Jesus could tell that the scribe was not only wise but also on the right path. And then Jesus assured him by saying, You are not far from the kingdom of God. See, I can't even imagine the relief that it would be to actually hear Jesus speak those words to me. Hearing that, you are not far from the kingdom of God, would be way more relief than hearing my GPS tell me I have reached my destination. Jesus' words to the scribe made an impact also on those who had been questioning, questioning, questioning Jesus about paying taxes just prior to that. You see, earlier in chapter 12 of the book of Mark, it says, when, I'm sorry, it says, then they sent to him some Pharisees and some Herodians to trap him in what he said. So, for the Pharisees and the Herodians, it's just another day in trying to trip Jesus up. 
who, by the way, the Pharisees and Herodians couldn't stand each other. They had two totally different theologies pertaining to God or gods, and they didn't get along. But it seems that they had no problem putting their differences aside in order to catch Jesus in a trap. And so I guess it's true. Nothing brings people together better than Jesus. Yeah, they came together for the wrong reason, no. When the Herodians and the Pharisees heard Jesus tell the scribe that his understanding of Scripture had led him to be not far from the kingdom of God, they were astounded. I mean, who is this Jesus to be making such a statement? And by what authority does he make assurances such as this? The Pharisees and Herodians didn't know it. But we do. Jesus is the Son of God. Whom else would be able to make such declaration of the kingdom of God? I can understand why they stopped asking him questions at that point. And it, in my mind's eye, I can almost picture them kind of slowly slinking back into the shadows from whence they came. That's in my mind, anyway. And you know what else? I wish there were more follow-up stories in the Bible. Don't you? I mean, I really would like to know what happened to that scribe that Jesus was talking to. What happened to him? Did he become a follower of Jesus? If he did, was it publicly or was it secretly? We don't know. But I really hope that he felt a great relief that any of us would have felt as well to be told by Jesus, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So as we follow the GPS of the Word of God, where is it leading us? Are we taking too many side roads along the way? Or are we making good time on the trip that we're on? I pray that we all feel great relief when it's our turn to reach our destination. Let that be our prayer this day. Amen.